now then. Steve Waugh, uh, legendary captain of Australian cricket. Uh, the Aussies have just hammered the English 6-1 yep. in the one days, but of course in the Ashes it was 3-1 to England. So happy, unhappy? Where do you stand? I think the country was pretty unhappy if we lost the Ashes. I mean, that was where it's really at for all Australians watching. The Ashes is built up to this amazing series, which it is, a lot of tradition and history. Uh, we expected to perform better. I don't think we mind losing, but by such commanding margins are not something we're used to and that uh, really you know it's disappointing for not only the players but spectators and I guess Cricket Australia has got to do a bit of a review and find out what went wrong. Um, one day cricket, great result for Australia, it's still ranked number one in the world and uh, it's almost a different form of the game so we can't really look at them together, you've almost got to assess them in isolation. Well we'll get on to the one day cricket in a minute, I mean you won a lot of Ashes, did you actually lose an Ashes series at all? Unfortunately, I lost my first one in 1986 when uh, Mike Gatting, they won the, all the competitions. Uh, lost that one, we won the next eight. Right, but in 1986, as you well know, uh, Alan Border's team, you were losing quite a few. You lost quite a few to start with yeah. before you became a great, great Strong. team. Now, here we are. These things are cyclical. Uh, this Australian team have lost a lot of great players pretty much at the same time. You don't overnight replace Glenn McGrath, Shane Warne, Matty Hayden, yeah. Adam Gilchrist, etc. Yeah, I, I tend to disagree a little bit. We haven't lost them all together. It's been a gradual process if you look at it. It's been over a you know, five, six, seven year period. So we've had opportunities to blood out the players um, and we've got a lot of talent. We've got some good young kids coming through, particularly in the bowling area. I don't think we're going to be too far from the mark. Maybe may take 12 months to get back into test cricket, 18 months. But we'll, we'll be up near the top somewhere. There's, there's so many good young players out there and we've still got plenty of experience. I think this Ashes series really was... Um, the players let themselves down. They, they did. They, they'll say they played poorly. I was going to ask you: Was it Australia playing badly? Was it England playing well? A bit of both. It's always a bit of both. You know, I mean, if someone plays well, you put enormous pressure on the opposition, and things sort of tend to go bad to worse when you try extra hard to recover the situation. I know what it's like when we played England. You know, we're up against good sides on paper, but once we get on top, it's it's hard to turn it around. And uh, England, to England's credit, they played thorough all-round cricket. There wasn't any facet of the game that was weak. And I thought their fielding was excellent and you know, their togetherness on the field really showed up and they just put so much pressure on Australia that they, they, they cracked them up. As a man who was pretty hard to get out, who would, who would kill before he'd lose his wicket, you must have been impressed with um, Alistair Cook who, who came to Australia under, supposedly under pressure yeah. and just had the, the dream series. Amazing series, I mean he played superbly well and I think not only him, Jonathan Trott really has added some spine to England's batting. That's someone they've been missing for quite a while. He's uh, very underrated with the job he does. I think he annoys opposition teams with the amount of time he takes scratching out centre and he goes about his own little routine, much the same way Matthew Hayden did. It's all about, you know, you've got to wait for me until I'm ready and that can put opposition teams off. So he played a crucial role. But Cook batting was um, superb. His temperament, fitness um, and concentration were, were really a great example to his teammates. Yeah, and the bowlers as well, they, they put people in the right areas and when mm. Bresnan and Tremlin had to come in, yeah. Not known particularly to be, to be test match wicket takers, they did the job. They worked very well as a unit. I mean, they just um, exceptionally. The four or five bowlers did a great job together. A lot of credit's going to be given to Andy Flower and, and, and uh, Andrew Strauss. Um, you know, for making them work as a unit. You know, they they didn't seem to be selfish in any regard. They were happy for other players to get the, the rewards. Um, yeah, it was a very comprehensive bowling effort and it's similar to what I guess we used to do when we were on top. Um, guys working together, keeping pressure on from both ends, putting balls in the right areas and of course backing up with good catching. Now without taking anything away from Australia on the one day series, uh, you know the last time England came to Australia lost 5-0 in the Ashes and then I think won the one day series reasonably comfortably. Is there something going on here where once you've won the Ashes it's such a such an effort, such an intense period of time that it's very hard to maintain it. Yeah, definitely. And I think also the fact that players got their eye on the World Cup and IPL. You know, it was almost like, geez, we've got to play the one days now, and seven especially it was way too many. Um, but for Australia, it was great because it gave players a chance to prove themselves, to get into a bit of rhythm. I think Australia definitely had a lot more to play for than England. And, you know, whilst it was 6 1 and a great result, you probably can't read too much into that result. No, bad result for England, though, in terms of the World Cup. I mean, there is a World Cup. England have never won the World Cup. Australia defending champions, I guess, even though it's a different format of yeah. the game, coming into the World Cup on the back of the Ashes wouldn't necessarily be great. Coming into it on the back of a 6 1 win over England, things are looking very different for Australia and maybe England. I think more worrying for England is the amount of injuries they got in the last couple of weeks. Um, and Australia also, there was. I think players are almost 
you know they're, they're worried about getting injured, and that's seen a lot of a lot of players fatigued. And it was really was wasn't great planning when you look at it, particularly from Emmy's point of view, being away from home and your family for three months. Um, they really wilted in the end, and you know, they may pay the price going to the World Cup losing a couple of players through injury. Yeah, yeah. So Australia not far off, are they? I mean, they've got some good young players. They've got to stick with them, I guess, haven't they? Yeah, look, we've got some real talent. I mean, Steve Smith, perfect example. Yeah, he's not the finished product, but he's got a lot of uh, natural talent. And if you can give him the confidence that he's going to be in the side, he's going to develop into a match winner. So we've certainly got talent. Impossible question to answer. Who's going to win the, the, the World Cup? I guess it's one of, what, yeah, five, maybe? One of seven, I think. The West Indies have got a shot at, you know. You seriously they, think so, yeah? If they get on the run, they got the batsmen who are capable of beating any any attack up and they have to do it. Make the quarterfinals, we're going to win three games. Yeah. Um, now my, my gut feeling is South Africa. I don't know why, I've just got a gut feeling they may win it. Um, Australia are going to be somewhere there and uh, you, don't, you couldn't count out India and Sri Lanka. Yeah, what about the World 2020 champions? Who would have thought it? England. Are they? <laughs> you know they are. Well, good luck to them. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, look, England have uh, done their homework recently. They, they prepare well, they've got good players. I mean, why wouldn't they win a World Cup? All right, Steve, thanks a lot. Okay, right, mate.